It's hard to be a woman in a man's world, but it's even harder if that world is professional wrestling, specifically the WWE. From the chairman of the board making his top female wrestlers bark on live television, impersonating a dog, to mud fights involving his daughter and unfortunate wardrobe malfunctions. Today, we dive into the most embarrassing moments involving WWE's female wrestlers. Trish Stratus, one of the most celebrated WWE women's wrestlers, had a particularly humiliating moment on March 5, 2001, when she was humiliated and forced by Vince McMahon to strip down to her lingerie and bark like a dog on national television. For context, back in early 2001, during the build-up to WrestleMania 17, Vince and his wife Linda were part of a storyline where Vince had Linda put in an institution after he told her he wanted a divorce. Trish was added to the storyline as Vince's new plaything while Linda McMahon was away. Eventually, Vince starts harassing Trish by telling her that she is nothing but a toy and that he wants her out of his life. Trish begged Vince to take her back, which led to Trish performing one of the most demeaning acts a diva has ever had to go through. In front of millions, Vince McMahon told Trish Stratus to get on her hands and knees like a dog. When Trish did it, Vince told her to bark like a dog. Trish started barking as tears rolled down her face. Vince had sunk to a new low by humiliating her in a way no other diva had ever been before. While there have been plenty of embarrassing moments for a number of divas in the past, this moment between Vince McMahon and Trish Stratus still remains one of the hardest to watch. The segment is often cited as a low point in the portrayal of women in WWE and left many fans and critics outraged, being one of WWE's most controversial moments. On the plus side, Trish managed to get revenge on Vince by slapping him during his match with his son Shane at WrestleMania 17, and from there became a fan favorite who would move on to win the women's championship. Trish Stratus has reflected on this segment several times. She recalled that Vince pitched the angle to her as a way for her character to hit rock bottom, which would eventually lead to her standing up for herself and getting revenge. Trish agreed to the storyline, understanding the eventual payoff at WrestleMania, where she would get her payback. Speaking about the controversial angle, she stated, for the character, it was integral to hit rock bottom, so she could have the foresight to say, I can break free from this. Trish also mentioned that despite the degrading nature of the segment, it was an important part of her character's development. She compared it to the treatment of actors in films who play roles that require them to endure difficult scenes, emphasizing that it was part of the storyline and character evolution. This perspective allowed her to view the incident as a necessary step for her on-screen persona rather than a personal humiliation. Wardrobe malfunctions have been a recurring issue in WWE and a notable source of embarrassment for many female wrestlers over the years, drawing significant attention from fans and media. For example, Stephanie McMahon experienced multiple wardrobe malfunctions during her time in WWE, which have been widely discussed. In 2002, during an episode of Raw, Stephanie had her behind exposed while involved in a segment with Triple H. She was dragged by Triple H when she was trying to escape the ring, and Triple H grabbed her by the pants, which led to her backside being exposed on live television. Stephanie later commented on the incident during an appearance on The Howard Stern Show, saying, It was really an accident. I was horrified. Things happen, right? It's not like it happened again, right? Well, actually, it did. On March 12, 2002, during a SmackDown taping, Triple H attempted to give her the pedigree on the announce table, and in the process, her breasts were exposed again. This footage was edited out of the television broadcast, but uncensored versions surfaced online. Stephanie recalled this event in an interview on the Industrial Strength Show, noting how mortified she felt as she realized her exposure with her arms pinned behind her back, unable to cover herself. Charlotte Flair also faced a wardrobe malfunction during a match against Lana, on an episode of SmackDown. Early in the match, Lana accidentally pulled on Charlotte's shorts too much, leading to an unplanned exposure. Charlotte, known for her sense of humor, later addressed the incident in a video with Becky Lynch, joking, I just wanted to give Toronto a good show. The crowd reacted with a thank you, Lana, chant, highlighting the awkward yet lighthearted reception of the moment. Caitlin, a former WWE Divas champion, also experienced an embarrassing moment during a match when her top slipped, 
exposing her chest. This incident, which occurred during a live event, was quickly rectified as Caitlyn readjusted her attire and continued the match. Nikki Bella also faced a wardrobe malfunction during a match where her top came undone, leading to an unintentional exposure. Nikki, known for her bold and confident persona, handled the situation swiftly by readjusting her attire and continuing the match without letting the incident affect her performance. Maria Canellis also experienced a wardrobe malfunction during a live event. While performing a move, her top shifted, leading to an unplanned reveal. Maria quickly covered herself and readjusted her outfit, showcasing the quick reflexes and professionalism that WWE wrestlers need in these situations. During the Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania 34, Natalia also experienced a wardrobe malfunction, which left her embarrassed on one of the biggest stages in wrestling. Wardrobe malfunctions are particularly cringe-worthy, given the massive live audience and millions watching at home. Moving on from wardrobe malfunctions, at WrestleMania 37, Mandy Rose had a comically embarrassing moment when she slipped on the ramp during her entrance because the ramp was wet from the rain. This happened during a tag team gauntlet match, and despite her quick recovery, the slip was widely noticed, caught on camera, replayed multiple times, and talked about among fans, making it a notably embarrassing moment in her career. On the June 23, 2014, episode of Monday Night Raw, Vicky Guerrero got her revenge on Stephanie McMahon by dumping her into a pool of mud in one of WWE's most memorable and embarrassing moments for female wrestlers. Vicky Guerrero and Stephanie McMahon faced off in a match that ended with both women covered in mud. The storyline leading to this moment was steeped in tension as Stephanie McMahon sought to oust Vicky Guerrero from her position as general manager of Raw. The match, dubbed a mud match, was a classic WWE segment designed for maximum drama and entertainment. The premise was simple. The loser would be thrown into a pit of mud set up near the ring. As the match progressed, it became clear that this was as much about physical comedy and spectacle as it was about the storyline. Vicky Guerrero, known for her shrill catchphrase, excuse me, and her role as a heel, was the underdog against the more powerful, and authoritative Stephanie McMahon. In a surprising turn of events, Vicky managed to throw Stephanie into the mud pit, much to the delight of the audience. This act of rebellion and triumph was short-lived, however, as Stephanie's bodyguards intervened. The segment concluded with Stephanie pushing Vicky into the mud, effectively writing her off from her on-screen role for the time being. In a post-segment interview, Stephanie McMahon commented on the incident saying, It was one of those moments that you know is going to be talked about for years to come. We had a lot of fun with it, and it was a great way to add a little extra drama to our storyline. Vicky Guerrero also reflected on the event, noting, Getting tossed into a mud pit was definitely a unique way to go out, but it was fitting given the kind of character I played. I loved every minute of it, and the reaction from the fans made it all worth it. While it was a comedic segment, it was also humiliating for both women involved, especially given Stephanie's high-ranking position within the company. This moment remains one of the most talked about and iconic scenes in WWE history, illustrating the lengths to which the company goes to entertain its audience and advance its storylines. Despite the embarrassing nature of the segment, both women embraced the ridiculousness of the situation. These moments highlight the unpredictable and sometimes humiliating nature of live wrestling, where anything can happen, and sometimes things don't go as planned. Despite these embarrassing instances, many of the women involved have continued to thrive in their careers, demonstrating professionalism. During a match on Monday Night Raw, Cameron, a former Funkadactyl, tried to pin her opponent Naomi while Naomi was lying on her stomach. This fundamental mistake led to the referee refusing to count, and it became a notorious moment for Cameron highlighting her inexperience and lack of basic wrestling knowledge. From someone who lacked wrestling skills to someone who was trained in the infamous Heart Dungeon, Natalia Needhart, a highly skilled wrestler, was saddled with an embarrassing farting gimmick in 2012. She is a veteran of the ring with the ability to put on great matches when given the opportunity. She comes from one of the greatest wrestling lineages, and her work, both in and outside of the ring, has only served to promote WWE and make them look good. So what do they do to return the favor? They give Natalia bad gas. Natalia had a condition where when she got nervous, she would fart. Her farts would be so smelly that they would cause wrestlers, referees, 
trees and even poor Hornswoggle to collapse from the seemingly toxic fumes. Whether it was on Raw or SmackDown, in the ring or backstage, Natalia just couldn't stop farting. The storyline was meant to be comedic, but fell flat with the audience and did little to enhance her character. The angle quietly disappeared without any meaningful payoff. Weddings are supposed to be a day that women will never forget. However, for WWE diva Dawn Marie in 2003, her wedding had to be something special. First off, this was all a storyline, and in it, Dawn Marie was feuding with Tori Wilson. As the weeks went by, the feud escalated to the point where Dawn Marie, in order to get in Tori's head, had relations with her real-life father, Al Wilson, and even decided to marry the lucky guy. They held the wedding ceremony on SmackDown, and for reasons that were never fully explained, Dawn Marie decided that she wanted to get married in underwear. The happy couple stripped down to their underwear, which is as naked as one can get on TV, and the wedding took place. In the end, Dawn Marie knocked her groom down, but still kissed him, and this embarrassing moment was locked forever in the minds of WWE fans everywhere. It was an awkward, strange wedding for an awkward, strange storyline featuring two divas who could have done so much more with better material. At least Mr. Wilson got to benefit from the weird story. Remember Karma? She was hyped up for a while with a cackling laugh that echoed the arenas whenever her video package played. Karma was not your typical diva. She was a monster of a woman who dominated in Japan and then went over to TNA to lay the groundwork for the knockout division. Build at 5'11 and weighing in at 273 pounds, Karma could squish the much smaller divas of WWE like they were pretty little ants. So when she first showed up on WWE television at Extreme Rules 2011 to attack Michelle McCool, the fans went wild for her. This was something they had never seen before and they were ready to watch Karma perform in the ring and steamroll herself to an inevitable WWE Divas Championship run. Then, on the May 23rd, 2011 edition of Raw, Karma did something that nobody would have expected. She broke down and started crying in the ring. This woman, who had been hyped as a menacing presence who would reign as queen of the Divas, was now reduced to tears in front of thousands in attendance and millions around the world. A week later, Karma announced that she was pregnant and had to leave WWE. While the reason for her leaving was legit, it was embarrassing to have to watch a woman who arrived with such a bang go out on a whimper. In the early 90s, Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth were the king and queen of WWE. The fans loved the couple, and their history together, dating back to the mid-80s, was a storied one that reached a high point when Randy Savage and Elizabeth got married at SummerSlam 1991. Not too long afterward, WWE champion Ric Flair started bragging to anyone who would listen that he used to date Elizabeth before she got together with Savage. From interview to interview, Flair would keep saying that she was mine before she was yours, and it got Savage to show his mad side on more than one occasion. But the harassment just kept coming, and soon, Flair was putting up photos of himself having a good time with Elizabeth. Flair even threatened to show a nude photo of Elizabeth at WrestleMania 8. Talk about being ahead of the time. Fortunately for Elizabeth, the photos were doctored up, and no nude photos showed up. Instead, Savage got revenge on Flair and won the WWE Championship. Flair tried to get one over by kissing Elizabeth, but she slapped him away. It was a controversial moment that took a sweet and innocent Miss Elizabeth and implied that she had gone on many visits to Space Mountain. When you're the daughter of a multi-millionaire owner of the most successful wrestling promotion in the world, the last thing you'd expect to have to happen is that you wind up unconscious in a car with another wrestler marrying you via a Las Vegas drive through wedding. But that's exactly what happened on the November 29th, 1999 edition of Raw. Stephanie was supposed to get married to Test. As the bride and groom met in the ring to get married, Triple H came out and with a smirk on his face, showed footage of himself and a liquored up Stephanie eloping and officially tying the knot. It was an embarrassing moment, not just for Stephanie, but for Test and for the entire McMahon family, and it made for great television. Triple H married himself into the family and was able to gain more political power as a result of his devious actions. Ironically, this storyline wedding between Triple H and Stephanie eventually became the real deal when the two started dating in real life before finally getting married for real. Triple H sure knows how to commit to a story. It would be hard to pick out just one because the diva search could be its own video, but for the purposes of this list, 
all five years of the WWE Diva Search Contest will be put here. What started out as a way to promote the women of wrestling and gain potential new WWE Divas turned into weekly installments of Divas, getting involved in comedy segments and ridiculous games that were a waste of time and had little to do with professional wrestling. There were dance contests, singing contests, pie-eating contests, hot dog or sausage-eating contests, and even physical challenges that only served to give fans a reason to take a bathroom break. While the Diva Search did introduce Christy Hem, Layla, Eve Torres, and the Bella Twins to WWE, nobody really cared about them until they got past the actual competition and started having real feuds. Now, NXT is doing things right by featuring new divas through actual wrestling matches, and hopefully, the diva search continues to be a fleeting moment in WWE history that serves as a reminder of what not to do when it comes to recruiting new superstars. At WrestleMania 25, a Divas Battle Royal was billed to feature not just the current divas on the roster, but also past divas, such as Sunny, Victoria, and Molly Holly. The winner would be crowned Miss WrestleMania and would definitely have bragging rights for the rest of the year. Instead of using this moment to push a diva and elevate her status, WWE decided to include a live Kid Rock performance that undermined their entrances and the beginning of the match, and then have the winner of the match be Santina Morella, who was actually just Santino pretending to be his sister. It became a joke match that further lowered the bar on WWE Divas ever being taken seriously. The problem with this battle royal was how much it undermined the fact that the WWE Divas really are talented women, and the fact that a man came in dressed as a woman only made the whole world think that the WWE Divas are nothing more than pretty faces instead of the truth, which is that these women are hardworking professionals that train just as hard as their male counterparts. This moment is embarrassing not just for wrestling fans, but for every single WWE Divas who has made an attempt to work hard to make their way to the top. Mae Young was a female wrestler who paved the way for the WWE Divas of today. However, she got involved with Mark Henry in one painfully awkward storyline. At the time, the year was 2000, and he was known as Sexual Chocolate, and the two supposedly fell in love. The two had an affair, and while in her late 70s, Mae Young claimed she was pregnant with Mark Henry's child, which was pretty impressive on her end. During the February 28, 2000 episode of Monday Night Raw, Mae Young's water broke, and she supposedly went into labor. The emergency services came, and the delivery took place backstage. From the backstage area, Fabulous Moolah, Pat Patterson, Gerald Briscoe and Mark Henry were all there to support May's birth. With a cigar in hand, May pushed and pushed while someone in production was busy pressing the fart button to make the moment even funnier. Finally, after a lot of struggle, the emergency technicians managed to pull out a hand from May Young, a plastic hand covered in afterbirth. This was followed by Briscoe puking and Pat Patterson saying, Let's give her a hand. Top-notch humor. While this segment lives on in infamy as an embarrassing segment for wrestling fans, WWE at least was able to make fun of itself by having the hand, now a fully grown man-hand hybrid, reunite with May in a backstage segment at Raw 1000. May Young had an amazing career in the WWE, but this storyline was not one of her finest moments. Eva Marie's re-debut on NXT was memorable for all the wrong reasons. Her lack of in-ring skills was painfully obvious, and the crowd's negative reaction was intense. This moment solidified her reputation as one of the least skilled wrestlers in WWE history, creating a lasting embarrassment for her career. During a 2012 episode of Raw, Rosa Mendez, who was managing Primo and Epico, experienced an embarrassing moment when she attempted to dance on the ring apron. The segment involved her dancing to Fandango's theme music, but her performance was awkward and drew laughter from the crowd, turning what was supposed to be a sensual dance into a cringeworthy moment. But there was another notable incident involving Rosa Mendez. Rosa experienced a wardrobe malfunction during a match when her shorts were pulled down, exposing her backside. The incident was quickly addressed, and Rosa continued with the match, but the moment was embarrassing and became a talking point among fans and media. Which embarrassing moment involving a female WWE wrestler were you more shocked by? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.